Hi there, it's Eileen Clausen, and today I want to share with you about fluency. As a reading specialist, I always stress how important fluency is to be part of a balanced literacy program. So today I'm going to share with you about what fluency is, why you should worry about it, and how you can teach it. So fluency shows up in a lot of different ways. So one way uh, that you can see that a student is a fluent reader is that they're reading with accuracy. So this means that they're actually paying attention to the text as they're reading, and they're paying attention to the words, and they're actually showing that what they're reading makes sense, and not just um, including random words that don't actually make sense in the sentence or the story. So this would be that they're also self-correcting. The next one is reading with expressions. This also shows you that the kids are actually understanding the story because they're really adding emotions in to their reading and they are trying to sound like the characters, if they know that the character is sad, if they see different words that describe how the character is feeling, they are including that in the way their voice is um, reading the story. They're also reading smoothly. We all have students who go through so fast, get from one sentence to all the way to the three sentences later without taking a break. So this is them paying attention to the punctuation and really making note of when there's um, breaks in the story. And the last one is reading at a natural pace. Of course, we want our students not to read too fast. We don't want them to read too slow. And we also just want them reading at just the right pace. So the reason that we should worry about fluency is because it actually leads to better comprehension. Like I said, with the accuracy and even reading with expression, if kids aren't um, paying attention to what they're reading, it makes it difficult for them to actually understand it. So if they're reading super slow, it's hard to get them to really understand what they're reading. And even if they're reading super fast, they're not paying attention to it, they're just rushing through. So when they read at the just right pace, they're actually going to have better comprehension. It also helps readers sound more natural. We all know those readers who either go super fast or super slow, and we want to emphasize to our students that we want them to sound just like they are talking while they're reading. So if they are reading at a good pace and they're focusing on their fluency, then they're also going to sound like a better reader overall. So a few different ways that you can teach fluency. There's one way that you should definitely always start with, which I do with everything that I teach in my classroom. You wanna make sure that you're modeling fluent reading. Okay, you can do this both by um, showing them what they should be doing and also showing them what they should not be doing. So I'm going to show you an example on the next slide of how I um, introduce this with my students. So what I do is I take a passage, a story, a poem, whatever you want to use, and I show them um, three different ways to read the story. And I always make a big deal of it and say, I want you guys to listen to me at my reading today and you guys are going to tell me when I'm done which version sounded the best. And a lot of times this will get your kids really engaged and laughing because they think it sounds so funny to hear their teacher reading in a different way, even though a lot of them read this way themselves. So for example, I'd say, okay, readers, today I'm going to read you Best Friends. And I'm just going to read the first few sentences. And I want you to pay attention to how I'm reading the sentences. So here we go. This is my first version of it. Jen is my friend. She plays with me. We play all the time. We like to run. We can run fast. We like to jump. We can jump up and down on the grass. Okay, now this will usually um, elicit a lot of laughs from your students because they know, well, Mrs. Clausen, you totally rushed through that. Okay, so then I would ask them, what was wrong with my reading that time? Yes, you're right, I went way too fast. Okay, listen to my version now. Jen is my friend. She plays with me. Okay, now this again will get your kids laughing because they think, wow, Mrs. Clausen, you are going so slow. Okay, and I always emphasize to them, is it okay if right now you're reading this slowly? Of course it is because you're still learning how to be fluent readers because of course you're going to have your struggling readers um, who are, who it does take a long time for them to get to the story, but that's okay because they know that we're working on this goal to get to be a little bit faster as we read. Okay, last time friends, I'm going to read through this story, see how I do. Jen is my friend. She plays with me. We play all the time. We like to run. We can run fast. We like to jump. We jump up and down on the grass. Okay, readers, who can tell me? What did you notice? And hopefully now they're telling you, you took a break at the end of the sentences. You didn't go too fast. You didn't go too slow. You added expression. Okay, they should be noticing all those things that my voice wasn't just staying flat throughout the whole thing. I was adding a little more expression. So this is one way that I introduce fluency, and I'll do this repeatedly throughout the year, come back to it and really practice, okay, which one sounds the best? And this um, shows them 
as they are going to be working on fluency, how to be better readers. And I'll do this all the time with any sort of read aloud that I'm doing to make sure that I'm modeling that fluent reading. So how can you teach fluency in your classroom? I really recommend having a fluency center as part of your daily rotations. So whether you use any sort of workshop model or any sort of rotations, um, there's hopefully a time that you have where kids can be off in a center and they're actually practicing reading fluency, fluently. And here's a few different ways you can do it. They can be reading to someone, where they're reading to a partner, anything that they're capable of reading. They can time themselves. You can do this on your phone. They can do this on an iPad. You can use just a simple actual timer just to see if they um, can improve their time if they're moving really slowly through stories. They can also record themselves and listen to their reading. Again, you can do this on a computer. You can do this on your a phone. You can do this iPod, iPad, whatever it is that you have available. It's a great thing for them to um, listen to themselves and then record themselves and then listen to themselves. And this can be done in a lot of different free apps as well. So you're gonna also have them practice rereading the story. They might be reading stories, they might be reading poems, phrases, words, whatever level they're at, that's what you want them doing. So I use my fluency folders with those little passages in there where the kids are practicing any number of these things, whether by themselves or with a partner, or maybe even if you have a parent volunteer, you can also have them do it with them. So if you're looking for passages in your room to set up a whole little fluency center or assessment program in your classroom, I have them all the way from kindergarten to third grade. So that's levels A all the way up to P. Um, so you might wanna check them out if you're interested in that. Thanks so much and have a great day.